people to interview. And I just love this lady. This lady, if you don't know the viewers, is Miss Angie Brown. Welcome to Everyone TV. Thank you. Angie, most people would know you for, you know, your commercial classic hits, which we're going to talk about in a second. But you've performed with absolutely everybody. How did you get into singing and what made you decide that path? Well, um, sort of like, um, I would say mid-80s, mid early 90s, I used to try my best to be a session musician, you know, a session singer just turns up, put the headphones on, goes into the studio and just sings what they're told to sing. And you don't have to read music. So I started to get in session work, but my voice is very distinctive and I didn't really kind of blend into the background. So then when house music came around and they wanted to hire the American ladies, I could make that noise, that, that, that church noise, that gospel sound that's, you know, demanded in house music. And, um, yeah, I started doing that and went on to have the hit up with Bizarre Inc. Which I'm going to talk about in a second. But, you know, the, the likes of Martha Walsh, uh, these great gospel singers, Martha Walsh, Barbara Tucker. For me, you're the only British singer that can do that. Really? Oh, my God. I'm really, really... I'm oh, sorry. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, um, what you have to... You know, you've been to drama school, you've had that training. Sometimes you've just got to put the head on. And um, I remember when they said to me, oh, we want, can, can you sound like Jocelyn Brown? And I was like, inside I was laughing. I thought, who can sound like Jocelyn Brown? And um, they played it to me and I, and it was a sample that was going around on this bootleg and on the bootleg had kind of like another 10 hits on it that we, you know, you would be familiar with in the 90s. And I said, this, this woman doing this, why, when, why waste your time? And I thought, oh my God, right, I'm gonna put the headphones on and my voice is gonna go right down in my boots. And I did it and I, and I remember saying to them, uh, you know, we've got to hurry up. I can't keep doing this because it's going to ruin my voice and I'm singing at someone's wedding tomorrow. So we did it in a couple of takes. T to me, with most backing singers, they're better than the people out front. Agreed? Yeah, that's right. We're part of the sound. And I think <clears throat> I've been classically trained where the teacher was very... Um, she was brilliant and she got that mix. It's a mixture of... It's really high, but you don't go soprano. It's high and it has to stay in your chest voice. And if you can do that, then you've got the sound, what, they, what the American girls learn in church, naturally. And they talk like it as well. They go, go ha, and ha. And it's a really, it's a rounded sound. It's a big yeah. roar and it comes out ch very chesty. Yeah. But what I'd like to know is, would you, I know it's very hot, that's because you're around me and I'm, that happens all the time. I'm sorry, <laughs> viewers, but we know it's true. Sorry. But no, I mean, looking back over your career, do you ever think to yourself, you know what, I should have been that one. I should have been putting out the albums. My voice should have got the recognition that I believe that you should have deserved. Yes and no, because, you know, if, you, if you're spiritual, there's nothing that's done before the time, you know, because I'm still here 20 years later. I've got two little boys, and we, I feel really blessed. I'm still... Um, accepted by the really cool dance people and I'm you know I'm, I suppose they put me up there as a as a diva or a legend or a legend whatever but um, I guess you know things were different then people can put their own tracks out now and have hits on their own back then it was so label reliant you had to get a big record company behind you and then obviously the smaller dance labels started in their mum's front rooms but it was still you still needed the sales to, to, to be a massive hit. But now you can self-promote because of the internet. I mean, the in well, it was probably around, but I hadn't heard of it back then. No, I mean, you said about small record labels. I mean, XL Records, who basically signed the early Prodigy and, and bands like that. You know, you're right. And, and I was thinking, at the time, that rave music was very male-dominated. It was house that was related to ladies and any DJ that out there who's a good DJ will always play to ladies and your voice just can drag a woman off the floor and bring her out throw a handbag down and dance I mean how does that make you feel when you out and, and you heard someone seem playing one of your songs brilliant I know I've walked down the road before and seen people rocking in their cars to it so it's a really nice feeling but I, but then again I think that's a part of my job I'm here to provide escapism like you forget about your bills forget about your worries you're here to dance because when people are listening to music and music sends them then they're liberated you get a sense of freedom and you get a sense of 
a oneness and I think that modern day life is can be full of anxiety and it can be it can get you down so when you do let loose and you think right I've, I'm going to spend this amount of my wages on dancing and and having a good time and and then the DJ gets it right and it's all feel good then it, it transcends you it makes you feel really good about yourself and life and you can you can be hedonistic because it's that one moment of pleasure and you know, your voice has brought pleasure to many many people and you. you know and well, and back to the voice i mean you know people will, will remember what's happened this year oh. you you appeared on the voice do you regret going back on that show is there any point you thought why did i do it Actually, every time I every time I got a new audition, because you have to you have to they call you back a few times, maybe about four or five times, and every time I got a call back, I was burst into tears and saying, "Oh, I'm putting my neck on the block here," and because you feel very exposed, you know, you're dealing with the big boys like the BBC, and it's watched by millions. But the exciting thing was. They came to me, the program makers came to me and said, would you like to sing I'm Gonna Get You? And I said, of course I would. You know, I didn't choose it myself. So when they said, would you like to sing? I thought, yeah, because, you know, that could be my angle as well. Like, you know, everyone knows the song, but not the singer. And I get a chance to sing a very studio made record live. And the band, they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get to, we, you know, we're not playing on a ball ballad. We're playing this tune, this really heavyweight tune live. And it was challenging for me to be able to have an edited sound live that cut up and it's almost, you know, it's full of kudos and an attitude. And yeah, I, I, thought I, I thought I delivered well and my audience, the audience, oh my goodness, if you were in the audience, thank you so much because they just gave me so much and we were flying absolutely flying and if you know it's been a really good thing to do because people have been hiring me i've got festivals i've got parties i've got weddings i've got civil ceremonies people have just it's just woke, woken everyone up as to who i am and you know what i do i mean i was watching that and to be honest if i could afford another tv i would have smashed my one up it's television we know it's it's television and it's good for ratings and and it's the opportunity because I, I you know i was too young to do opportunity knocks or when i was a kid you know i couldn't get involved in the tv shows talent shows so now that i've been given this opportunity then i'm going to grab it with um both hands i mean a few of my friends are going up for it as well this year who? Tell me <laughs> no, who. No, I can't tell you. Ooh, I that... can't tell you. It's girls you know, though. Well, listen, it's a pleasure meeting you, Thank and you. I, I know that we've met somewhere. It's like we're in a sauna bath, isn't it? I know. It? I will take my clothes off, but there's an audience here, and they're not getting nothing for free. Listen, Angie Brown, this lady rocks, Emmy 1 TV.